Hello coding lovers, welcome to my youtube channel, hope you all are doing good. This is my 10th video lecture on C++ programming. In this tutorial, I'll be talking about storage classes in C++ and in the previous video, I was talking about modifiers in C++. If you haven't watched the previous video yet, just go to that video and watch it because that video is totally linked to this video. I'll give the video link in the description box below. Now, let's get started. <music> Storage class defines the scope, visibility, and lifetime of variables or functions within a C++ program. Okay, means storage class actually defines how you can access a variable, when the variable will be created, and when the variable will be destroyed, these all stuffs. I'll explain in detail. This is a syntax for storage class. First, you have to use the storage class keyword, then data type, then variable name. We have five types of storage classes in total. First one is automatic, then external, static, register, mutable. Okay. First of all, let's understand the first one, automatic. For automatic, you need to use keyword auto. And the lifetime of this variable is within the scope. Means within the scope, the variable will be created. And when the control comes out of scope, this variable will be destroyed. And the visibility is local and the initial value will be garbage value if you don't initialize anything then by default garbage value will be assigned to this variable now let's do the practical for this to understand more okay let's open our text editor and write our code here Okay, let's declare a variable here, suppose int val equal 10. This is actually a local variable. Now, instead of int, if you write auto here, then by default this value will be considered as integer. It will check this side. So, is it an integer? Yes, this is an integer. So, this val will be considered as integer variable. Now, similarly, if you write auto, suppose f well equal 20.5 so the data type of f well will be float type now similarly if you write auto g8 for example if you store a character here suppose d now it will check what's the data type of this data the data type of this data is character so this variable will be converted to character data type now if you want to print this all then need to write okay now let's build and run this open your terminal yeah see it's printing value 10 20.5 then character d that means these all variables are automatically converted to their own data type. That's the use of automatic. These automatic variables are like our normal local variable. These variables are created within the scope and destroyed within the scope only. And if you don't initialize any value, by default it will take garbage value. So that's the visibility of automatic variables. Now let's understand the second storage class. Okay, the second one is external storage class. The keyword we need to write here is extern and the lifetime is whole program. That means as soon as the program runs, this variable will be created and it will be available until and unless the program gets terminated. The visibility is global and in the initial value is zero. Let's understand about this practically. Okay, let's remove our previous code. Now let's create an empty file here and save it and give a name like my header file dot h i'm giving the extension of dot h this file will be considered as header file just save it and i'm gonna create one more file suppose my cpp file dot cpp okay this is my cpp file my cpp file dot cpp save it let's declare a variable here int i will equal suppose 50 and in our cpp file 
let's declare one more variable double dval equals suppose 20.8 okay now in our main file i want to use these two variables like this yeah now if you want to build and run this it will give error yeah see eval was not declared in the scope now to use the variable which is available in another file you must include that file in your main file like this okay i'm including my header file dot h file which is available in the same directory of this main file now to use this variable inside this file you have to declare like this you no need to assign any value you just have to declare it now you can see there is no error see i will equal 50 is coming here which is assigned in this file now if i make it 100 and here it will be printing 100 run this again yeah see it's printing 100 now and similarly for this variable this is a double type and the value is 20.8 which is declared in my cpv file dot cpv file to use this variable again you need to include this here as include my cpv file dot cpv now you can print the value Then again, declare here. Okay, let's build and run this again. Oh, something is wrong. It's giving error. My cp file dot cpp no such file or directory. Why? Oh, I need to write C caps. Okay, let's build and run this again. This time there is no error. Yeah, you can see the value of dval is coming 20.8 now. So that's how you can use extreme storage classes in C++. Let's move to the third one. The third one is static. You need to use keyword static. The lifetime of static variable is the entire program, but the visibility is local and the initial value is zero. If you don't initialize anything, by default it will take value zero. Let's see the practical for that. Let's remove our last piece of code. Okay. To understand about static clearly, you need to have knowledge of function. I'll cover the function theta in detail later. But to understand about static, just I'm explaining briefly. Like main function, we can have other function. For example, it can have any name, like sample. Now, sample function can have a variable like int i val equal suppose 10 now i need to call this sample function inside main like this i'm just explaining briefly i'll i'll cover in detail in the upcoming videos don't worry now i want to print the value of i value here. okay now let's build and run this there is no error okay it's printing i value equal 10 so control is coming here inside main function it's calling the sample function the control jumps from this point to this point then then it's allocating an integer variable and assigning the value of 10 then it's printing the value of i val that is returning from this place to here and again it's returning from this place now what will happen if you call the sample function again and again three times let's build and run this again it will print 10 three times yeah now if i do this the new value of i val equal the old value of i val plus one so the new value of i val will be changed from 10 to 11 now it will print 11 here let's build and run this okay it's printing 11 11 11 three times now see the difference if i declare this as static what will happen let's build and run this again yes yeah, see first it's printing 11 then 12 then 13 why because when we didn't declare the keyword static what was happening on the first call it was allocating a memory it was assigning the value 10 it was incremented then that variable was destroyed 
and again the second call and again for the third call same thing was happening now when you declare this variable as static this variable will not be allocated in stack segment it will be allocated in data segment this is a different segment in memory layout once the function is called for the first time this variable will be created and the control will come here out of scope but this variable will not be destroyed it will remain in enter the program it's like global now for the second call again control will come here but now this time it will check whether any i value is available or not if it is available then it will ignore to create the variable again then it will increment in the last value so for the first time the value was 10 then it was incremented to 11 then 11 was printed then for the second call this will not be created again then it will increment on 11 so the new value will become 12 then 12 will be printed and for the third call again the variable will be incremented on 12 new value will become 13 and 13 will be printed and written 0 that's why we can see 11 12 13 okay next one is register we need to use keyword register the lifetime is within the scope like our local variable or automatic variable and the visibility is within the scope only local and the initial value is garbage let's do a practical for that okay let's remove our function and int suppose i equal to declare a variable here now when you declare a local variable this will be allocated in ram now to be used this variable by the cpu it has to come from ram to cpu which will take some amount of time now instead of doing that if we declare the keyword register here now what will happen instead of allocating memory in ram it will allocate memory in register of the cpu it's just a request to allocate the memory in cpu register instead of ram the benefit of doing that is if this variable is being used in our program so frequently then every time it will come to ram pick the variable use it in cpu then come back then again go back come back go back come back it will be happening every time so this amount of time could be saved by just writing the register keyword this will allocate the memory in register instead of ram so because of less amount of memory in register it's not 100 percent sure that the register variable will definitely allocate the memory in register it's just a request if memory is available then it will allocate otherwise it won't now let's print the value of i yeah it's printing 10 here so that's the difference it's like a local variable but the difference is instead of allocating memory in ram it will allocate memory in cpu register that's it okay let's move to the next one and the next one is mutable the keyword is mutable and lifetime is class visibility local and initial value is garbage so to understand about mutable you should have the knowledge of class and i'll be covering the class concept in the object oriented chapter in the upcoming videos so i'll be explaining about mutable storage class in the upcoming videos that's all guys for today thanks for watching my video in the next video i'll be talking about c++ operators if you like this video just hit the like button if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please consider subscribing to it and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any video whenever i upload so bye bye for today and see you in next video